Have you ever been in a situation where a patient with vague abdominal pain came to see you? Maybe in one of your night shifts? And you were the one responsible? Weren't there moments where you badly wanted to take a look inside your patient's body? To be more safe in deciding the next diagnostic or therapeutic step so that your patient would get optimal treatment? We have been in the same situation, but we discovered a fascinating tool we want to share with you, sonography. Being able to perform abdominal sonography will make all the difference. Join us on 123 Sonography. We are going to teach you everything you have to know to become an expert in abdominal ultrasound. Follow us now on a fascinating journey into the world of abdominal ultrasound. We will present to you some amazing case histories today. My name is Christian. And I'm Ulrike. We are medical specialists working in Vienna, focusing on sonography in general. We trained hundreds of students. Now, let's get going. Christian, can you show us the case of the patient with heart failure and acute abdominal pain? I think it's a beautiful example for how sonography can make all the difference. Of course, I will show you. It was a night shift. A 76-year-old male patient was admitted to a hospital because of acute heart failure. He was transferred to the ICU and had pulmonary congestion. As we can see, the left ventricular function was severely reduced and there was also a dyspnea present. So the patient got therapy with furosemid and everything was okay till the time the patient complained about pain in its lower abdomen. And then you came into place to perform an ultrasound. Indeed. And that's the scan of his bladder. You can see this whole great organ filled with urine. So. We were asking, how could this be? The patient because, had mm, got a urinary catheter before. I suppose so. So I can't detect a catheter balloon in this clip. That's exactly the problem. There's no catheter balloon, neither in the transversal view, as you can see here. So that means it was a dislocation. Correct. And no balloon in the longitudinal scan. We can't believe it but quite an easily made diagnosis with ultrasound, isn't it? No, it was clear. There has been a dislocation and a urinary retention and pain, of course, in the lower abdomen. So we had to do it again. So you repositioned the urinary catheter, I suppose, yeah. as we can see here now. This was not really easy because the patient also suffered from a remarkable hyperplasia of his prostate. But I can see beautifully the urinary catheter balloon here now. And isn't the bladder already getting a little bit smaller? Finally, we did it. And now the success, there's urine in the collection bag and there is the catheter balloon over here. Again, we can see this urinary bladder. Over here. And here, the balloon. Mm -hmm. And over here, the very immensely enlarged uh, prostate. So we did it and it wasn't very difficult to diagnose. It's full bladder and no balloon. So the problem was with the catheter balloon, which was dislocated. Then we could do some more pictures. The patient was already in a quite good condition. Mm -hmm. no, was relieved of his pain. No more suppose. pain. Mm -hmm. So we had some time to make additional scans. Here we can see this blooming on this foreign body in the bladder. It's a phenomenon we can also use when we are looking for gallstones or stones in the urinary tract. You were somehow in a playful mood, weren't you? Yes, indeed. Once I got up, I wanted to make some nice clips. And so we also displayed the inflow of the urine into the bladder from over here and here. So we knew Fursumit has done its work. Now, what can you learn from this case? Sonography is a very helpful tool 
to detect if a urinary bladder is full. And you can also see the cause of it, like in this case, even if it's a dislocation of a urinary catheter. And you can relieve the patient's pain immediately. Totally correct. The only question was, is the bladder full or is it empty? And is the balloon there or not? Of course, we can see a lot of other things like diverticular over here and the enlarged prostate. But these issues will be mentioned in the following chapters. We got another case of a patient with pain in the lower abdomen. Now, let's see what it is. I was on night shift again. A male patient came to our hospital and complained about pain in the lower abdomen. He had a medical history of a myocardial infarction one year ago. And two weeks ago, he was diagnosed atrial fibrillation and received oral anticoagulation. We did a scan. Okay, we again can see a urinary bladder in here. This object containing fluid, which means it's quite dark. But we can see an object that should not be here. It's white, means it's hyperetrogenic. It's round and it's on the left side of a picture somehow connected with the bladder wall. Exactly. And this should not be there. So, what could it be? Either a tumor or clotted blood or maybe a stone. So, I tried to find a vascularization. I used the color Doppler and was looking for some vessels. I couldn't find them. So, no vascularization could be seen. There was no acoustic shadowing behind this structure, so... It was no stone? No mm -hmm. stone. Do you have an idea what to do? I think I would try to move the patient and roll him onto his side. Okay, that's exactly what we did. First, we rolled the patient and afterwards the structure rolled. So it was not connected with the bladder wall. Mm -hmm. So, there was a history of oral anticoagulation and the patient also had the problem he can't urinate before. So, this was a clotted blood in a blood-filled bladder with urinary retention, pain over there, and the patient has to be transferred to the Department of Urology. Now, another beautiful example how easily ultrasounds can help us in scanning the urinary bladder. We also can detect foreign objects or even blood in it. There are beautiful pictures, you are right, but I think we have to get them. So let's go on with scanning the lower abdomen. Now I'm going to take you on an adventure. We together will perform a live scan of a urinary bladder. This is a lot easier than you might think, and it can help a lot in differential diagnosis of lower abdominal pain. For example, when there's urinary retention or maybe a urinary catheter not doing its job well. But before we start, I want to tell you a few words about the transducer we use for this examination. This is a curved array transducer, which is normally used for abdominal ultrasound, and it's got a range between 3 and 6 megahertz. As you see, we got a mark here, a vertical mark, over here and over here. And this is important to know because this is our orientation. The mark is either to point to the head of the patient or to my side, means the right side of the patient. So again, the mark either pointing to the head of the patient or to me to the right side of the patient. Then how to hold the transducer? There are several ways. I just can show you our way. For me, it's important that I got enough stability and have good contact with the body of the patient. So I hold it not too near the cable because when I hold it in this position, it's quite wobbly. I don't have enough stability. And when I hold it near the nose, I can also have contact with the body of the patient and apply the pressure I need. I hold it like a pencil because I can stabilize it and it's also light enough that I can do the movements that I need, tilting or moving the transducer. So where do we find the urinary bladder? Before performing an ultrasound, it is helpful to imagine the position of the bladder in the body. We find it in the lower abdomen behind the pubic bone, over here. The more the bladder is filled, the more we can see it in the lower abdomen. 
and we get two positions of a transducer to perform a scan, a transverse position and the sagittal position. Next thing is that we apply enough ultrasound gel. And when we place our transducer in a transverse angle, I place it on the lower abdomen, a few centimeters above the pubic bone. Again, remember that our vertical mark is pointing towards us to the right side of the patient. And I have to tilt the transduce a little bit behind the pubic bone. So we got a wonderful picture of a urinary bladder here. I press the freeze button and now we want to orientate. We remember we got our vertical mark pointing towards us and the vertical mark is pointing to the left side of a monitor picture. That means the left side of a monitor picture is where we sit. It's over here. The right side of the monitor picture is the left side of the patient. And then we got at the top of our monitor picture, we got the ventral structures, that means the abdominal wall, subcutaneous tissue. And at the bottom of our picture, we got the dorsal structures, for example, the rectum. So here on the screen, we got a beautiful picture of a full urinary bladder. So I optimize my picture, so I get my structure of interest centered. Press the freeze button. And now you see a urinary bladder in a transverse scan has got quite a rectangular form and the fluid in it is black or should be black. Sometimes you can see some reverberations, some artifacts, but we would refer to that in our course of basic abdominal sonography. Around the dark fluid, you can see the white border of the urinary bladder. It's the wall. And what we can do now is that we can measure the volume of it. We need three diameters for calculating a volume. So we start with the ventral dorsal diameter. 4.5 centimeters and the transverse diameter means about 11 centimeters. We store that and then we need another diameter to calculate our volume. So we turn our transducer clockwise in a sagittal position. It's easier to keep one finger at the body of the patient and now slowly, slowly turn until this mark of the transducer is pointing to the patient's head as you can see here. So that we get a good view of the urinary bladder. You see it's not so easy to get. You have to tilt really behind the pubic bone. So now we get a sagittal scan of the urinary bladder. And again, we take the third diameter we need for our calculation. This is craniocaudal diameter, diameter. And this is about 9.5 centimeters. We store the two. So now that we've got our three measurements, we can easily calculate the volume of our urinary bladder. We take diameter A, which is 4.5 centimeters, multiplied by diameter B, which is 11 centimeters, and then the sagittal view, which is the yeah, diameter C, 9.5 centimeters, and we multiply these three diameters which is 470 milliliters. And this we have to divide by two, which makes 235 milliliters. This is a normal volume of a filled urinary bladder. And now I'm going to show you an ultrasound scan of an empty urinary bladder.
This is not so easy in the beginning because the urinary bladder then is hidden behind the pubic bone. But I will show you how to tear the transducer and with some patience you will see you will succeed. Again, we apply enough of ultrasound gel. I place the transducer at the lower abdomen a few centimeters over the pubic bone. Again, the mark, the vertical mark is pointing towards me. And now you see I have to tilt the transducer quite hardly to come behind the pubic bone. And now here we got the picture, a beautiful picture of a nearly empty urinary bladder. You see it's quite smaller. The wall is a little bit thicker because it's not so stretched. But the content is black fluid again and the border is white. And now we turn our transducer again in a sagittal position. It's easier to turn it and then put it onto the abdomen again, because when you tilt it so much, it's quite complicated to turn. So be sure that our vertical mark points towards the head of the patient. And now you can see again, I have to tilt my transducer quite a lot to come behind the pubic bone. And here we got a sagittal scan of a nearly empty urinary bladder. That was easy, wasn't it? So if you got an ultrasound machine at your ward, just take a colleague and try it yourself. It's easy, you will see, and it's rewarding. We got so much information in such a short time. So just get on and try it for yourself.